Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's Rocksmith live stream. And once again, it's not really live. Uh, this week, uh, we are coming to you pre-taped because we have an event tomorrow. And uh, holy cow, guys, I'm getting weird echo. Sorry. I don't know what's going on. Ah, there we go. And we don't have any echo anymore, but we're still coming to you recorded from the past. Here's what's going on. Uh, we have uh, an event uh, tomorrow. So uh, on Thursday, when you are watching this, uh, we are doing this actually 24 hours in advance. We're doing this uh, Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Uh, everything that you see is going to be pre-taped. We won't be able to take your questions live uh, on the air, but we will be able to still answer your questions live in chat, so feel free to speak up. Uh, our friend Yubi Vertigo is here to help with that. Uh, I will also be monitoring the, uh, the chat live tomorrow. Uh, and we'll be doing all of our giveaways live as well. So I'll prompt them here, but they, you, you'll, you'll still be able to win them live tomorrow. And uh, you've probably noticed that this is a kind of a, a fun week for us. We have uh, our first metal mix. Uh, and that's, you know, we don't know if we're going to do more, but we figured we would give it a try. Uh, and these are not necessarily the metal songs that you may be familiar with. And that was on purpose. We've gotten a lot of requests from people saying, how come you don't get any of this subgenre of metal or that specific kind of metal? And, you know, there's a lot of varying tastes out there. So we attempted to, to do that, uh, and we attempted to sort of color outside the lines of what you might consider to be commercial metal or stuff that you may have heard on the radio or stuff like that. So hopefully you are going to enjoy our deeper dive into metal. We're going to play all three songs in the Metal Mix song uh, pack this week. We're also going to throw in a bonus song. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with flair, and uh, we'll give away all that stuff after the trailer. So let's take a look at the songs in this pack, and we'll be back for our first song. Thanks. So either that sounds super wonderful to you and it's about time we've gotten it or you heard that and went, oh my God, what is that? So either way, hopefully uh, you found something interesting this week. Uh, you know, hey, uh, opinions are... Uh 
common. Let's just say that. So uh, we're here to actually, you know, we, we always talk about the variety that we want to bring out to uh, to the Rocksmith audience, and this is a really good example of that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of music out there, so whether you find this polarizing or not, whether you love this or hate this, please do understand there's a wide world of, of guitar out there, and you can do a lot of stuff with it. And one person who's done a lot of stuff with it is Jason Kokel. Uh, Jason Kokel in the center square. Hi, Jason. Hello. And uh, Adrian Comale, uh on the side. How's it going? Living the dream. Uh, <laughs> he's living the dream as our lead data scientist. You had a, I, f I got your official title, and it was something even better than lead data Game scientist. Game intelligence manager. That's what it was. Oh man, I love that. You, it's, you got it's, it's pretty good. It's a pretty cool job title. Yeah. You know? I, I don't get to tell people like I'm a scientist when I go to the bar, which is like you know you lose some cool points, but whatever. You know, right. Like, Hi, I'm a scientist. Uh, you guys are going to kick it off with Morbid Angel. Uh, we were just talking, uh, Jason. Of course, you have. Uh, been a member of Impaled, a death metal band, uh, for, oh, many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. And you've toured... 15. 15 yeah. years, yeah. I listened to Jason's band when I was in high school. <laughs> and Not even say, kidding. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're a big death metal fan. You're a big metal fan in general. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it was like, oh, who gets to play more? Oh, I want to do more. Like, you know, right away, <laughs> yep. there was a lot of, a lot of enthusiasm. Um, Jason, uh, what are we in for on this? Or do you have any fun stories? Did you ever tour with Morbid Angel? Never, never toured with Morbid Angel, but... Um, uh, as part of one of the impaled tours that we did, I think it was our last European tour we ever did. Um, there, uh, I was in Croatia, and there was a fan who came up to me afterwards, and who, who was who was very intoxicated, <laughs> and he started talking to me. He says, "So, do you like metal?" <laughs> he just saw us play, and we're death metal, so it's funny. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, of course." And he said, "Do you like death metal?" I went, "Well, yeah, it's great." <laughs> "Do you like Morbid Angel?" Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> and, then and then he starts going on and on about different metal bands. And then finally he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm really drunk. I said, oh, it's okay. I know how it goes. And he says, so do you like metal? <laughs> and uh, the conversation was on a, like a loop for about 10 or 20 minutes. I'm not kidding. It, like I've never had that happen to me before. But I have other <laughs> weird things like that happen. But like I've never had <laughs> the same conversation over and over again in order. I mean, it was it was like he was... Broken. The ma there was a, a glitch in the matrix. He was what, he yeah. was drunk focused. Yeah. So Mor Morbid Angel brings out weird yeah. things in people. <laughs> yep, that's my Morbid Angel story. But anyway, this song is hard. It's 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 hard to play. It's pretty hard to read. Um, if you understand death metal and play it, you'll see some things that are familiar to you. But it's it, it's it, there's a lot of slides, octaves, uh, single note. Uh, tremolo, palm mutes, you know, it's kind of, and, you know, if you have a whammy bar, there's some whammy bar stuff in the solo. Um, we don't notate the whammy bar stuff because not everyone has one, but you, if you hear it, you can probably do it, so... It's yeah. kind of funny. I, I actually saw Morbid Angel a couple weeks ago in the city, and they were they were playing right after a band called Origin, who is a, also a death metal band, who are like pathologically technical, like <laughs> painful. Like it was like they, they're honestly insane. Like if you want to see some insane technical death metal, Origin is there. And like Morbid Angel playing after them made Morbid Angel seem kind of tame by comparison. I was watching them play, and I was like, oh, that doesn't look too bad because I was like, I'm probably gonna have to play this in a few weeks, right? And I was like, that doesn't look too bad. And then I was practicing the song. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, now I remember because yeah. I haven't really played much death metal since high school, and it was just. Like like, oh, okay, I remember now. This is actually really hard. <laughs> yeah, so. we, we will not be judging you harshly. <laughs> it's okay. The fact that you're here to play it is all that really matters. M my friend's band was supposed to open for that show, but their drummer injured themselves. They had to cancel the tour. That's very rock and roll. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It was really bad. Yeah, and, uh, but, and also Origin. I know those guys. We, we toured with them before. Oh, yeah, cool. So, yeah, I, I wish I could have gone to that show. It would have been great. It was a great show. They actually sent us an email about that. The, the drummer, like, she, like, they were like, yeah, they, she sliced her hand open. And there's blood everywhere. Yep. They can't play. Like, that was in yeah. the email that the venue sent us it was great <laughs> yeah it's true unfortunate but yeah well well now that we've gotten covered. to blood yeah exactly yeah. let's play uh it's immortal rights by morbid angel jason kokel on the top on lead guitar and adrian come on the bottom yeah, of the yeah, screen yeah. with rhythm guitar uh, after this first giveaway so some ernie ball gear coming to you if you're lucky back masking for you
That was wonderful. <laughs> Ow. And that was hard, but you you both did very very well. Yeah, I'm sure Adrian, you're uh, you need some ice there, buddy. Yeah, I like. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's one of those, yeah. There's a it's lot of stamina. It's yeah. a, a lot of the stuff this week seems to be about stamina mm-hmm. and being able to to stay consistent and and controlled through mm-hmm. a lot of really fast stuff. So yeah. this is the second time I've played this since I note tracked it. <laughs> so <laughs> it was, oh. yeah. I mean, I, I just, I mean, just had no time. It's really <laughs> intricate. Like that's really the thing. Is mm-hmm. it, it, I mean, yeah, it requires a lot of stamina because there's a lot of notes in it, but it's really intricate, which is I, mean, I think the thing that's most like. It's not just like. Forever, right. a, which is a lot of metal can be, and like this stuff is very. There's just a lot of stuff going yeah. on. Fair enough. Yeah, you know, That's but good. it's it's super fun to play though. I will say this much as someone that you know, like I was very scared about having to learn this when I first started. Like once you get into the groove of it, it's actually really really fun to play. It's just it. Yeah, take it phrase by phrase. <laughs> right. All right. Cool. For real. Thank you both. Thanks for You're having welcome. me. welcome. Wonderful. Uh, free stuff is what I promised, and free stuff is what we'll deliver with the Ernie Ball prize pack. We're going to give away one of these now, and uh, we'll give away another one later on in the show. But right now, even though we are pre-recorded, as I mentioned, uh, this giveaway is entirely live as you're hearing it. Uh, our friend UB Vertigo is uh, our community manager, Doug. He's in the, con- the, uh, the, uh, the chat room, and he will let you know what you need to do. Uh, it's pretty easy to enter this giveaway. All you have to do is be following our page, not subscribe, not you know money or anything like that. Just follow, click the little heart icon, and then follow his instructions on what you have to type into the chat room in order to uh, to uh, enter yourself into the uh, the giveaway. Uh, pretty pretty sure that if you just take a look at the chat room itself and the the words that are flying by, you will probably be able to follow the crowd and uh, get your your name in there. Uh, You are going to win everything you see here. A brand new set of strings for your guitar and your bass. Uh, A brand new strap. Uh, I think we're towards the end of the the green ones, and we might have one black one, too, as as pictured. I'm not really sure. Uh, Plus uh, Wonder Wipes, which is a great way to keep your guitar uh, well-maintained and uh, looking good and feeling good, like string cleaners and... uh, it's it's got some uh, some fretboard conditioner in there. I was just looking at one of the guitars that's in our office, and I said, ah, that wood looks thirsty, and that's how you fix it. Uh, if it looks dried out, you don't want it to be dried out. Your guitar will be better if it's moisturized. Uh, a peg winder to make the uh, changing of those strings a lot easier. And then, of course, picks, lots of picks. Uh, a dozen from our friends at Ernie Ball, and then three of our Rocksmith pink picks. This is the Skullboy design you can only get here. Uh, and for those of you who are wondering, they are 0.88 millimeters, so they're somewhere between a light and heavy. Uh, I'm sorry, a medium and a heavy. Yeah, they're, they're well, they're still also between a light and heavy if you want to get technical. But if you would like to win all this stuff, just like I said, follow Doug's instructions. UB Vertigo will show you the way. And uh, good luck to you. If he, uh, if you are the one who is uh, chosen at random, he will contact you over Twitch via a whisper and ask you for your name, your address, and your telephone number. We don't keep that information. We don't use it against you. We don't sign you up for mailing lists you don't want to be part of or anything like that. It's just so that the... Uh, the delivery company, if they need to contact you, if something goes wrong in transit, which it sometimes does, we get them back. We don't want them to send the prizes back to us. They, we would rather have them call you and say, I can't find your house, or uh, can you confirm that this is where this is supposed to be, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in any case, good luck. You could win something free today. Uh, we have more free stuff to give away uh, a little bit later in the show. Uh, right now, happy to welcome two more players onto the scene. It's Brian Shu uh, in the middle. And uh, over on the wing, it's our friend Travis Kindred, who has not been here for a while, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's, it's good to have you. Thank you very uh, much. Hey, what do you know? We have impossible bass things to play. Could I you know. join us? What a coincidence. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys are going to be doing Souls of Black by Testament, mm-hmm. legendary Bay Area thrash metal band. Yes. A lot of people oh, yeah. have said, hey, this sounds a lot like Metallica. And it does, because they kind of came up in the same scene, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. thrash metal evolved largely from the Bay Area. And mm-hmm. these were two of the big players in, yeah. that, in that thing. Uh, but what makes the bass so hard that we had to call you in for it? Um, I think I think mostly it's the intro. Uh, okay. There, there's a pretty it's a pretty uh, uh, cooking intro with some like really interesting uh, sort of uh, 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 quasi chord shapes and a lot just a lot of moving. Yeah. Just a ton of motion across the entire like it, it, within the first thirty seconds of the song, you have moved from the highest part of the instrument to the lowest part, um, mm-hmm. which is yeah, and it's not slow either. <laughs> it's not slow. <laughs> Nothing this week seems to be slow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the nice thing though is it does follow kind of a lot of patterns. So um, mm-hmm. as long as you have your hand in the right shape um, and you practice, uh, right. that that's a really great place to start. Really pl- great place to 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 get it under your fingers. It's not impossible. It's, right. it's improbable. Okay, <laughs> that's that's a good way to approach it. 
And uh, Shu, oh, you're going to play this on the Paul Reed Smith. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Very metal uh, guitar. A very metal guitar. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, how did, uh, I, I assume you're doing leads, which means you're doing yeah. Alex Skolnick's parts. So yeah. how's that working out for you? Super fun. I, I, I actually really enjoyed playing this tune over and over again. Um, and, like, Rye actually wanted to play lead, but he couldn't make it to today yeah he had specifically <laughs> requested to play the oh, song and yeah. the scheduling didn't work I re- out i remember last week he was like yeah man i'm just gonna be forever playing easy bass parts on the stream <laughs> and i'm just like oh we can give him a chance to yeah. shine and That's then he was just like can i play lead i'm like yeah sure man go for it like you uh he actually transcribed this tune and um so it's because we're pre-recording <laughs> it that he couldn't do it because yeah, he's usually yeah. here with us on Thursdays when we go live. And unfortunately, the, the one week that he asks, it's like, yeah. oh, sorry, we're going to just <laughs> not do the streams when you're here. Yeah. And I'm kind of glad he didn't because he Cause couldn't. Now you get a chance because to now do. I got to learn this tune and actually I, I've, I never really got into Testament all that much. Yeah, like I wasn't, I wasn't too much of a thrash metal um, fan fan. Like I like the music, but I never really got into it. But man, I love this tune. Like after playing it a couple times, it's super fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going on like a testament binge after this. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just super it's, sick. Yeah, it's it's really nice to have like a great tune that's also super fun. Yeah, yeah. And Alex is just such a clean, clean. Yes, he is. Player. Like I've read a lot of in, uh, like I've read a lot of interviews with him over the years, and I know why he's respected, and that's one of the things yeah. is he's he's very technical, but he's mm-hmm. he's not sloppy at all. Some he's of the like licks he plays are just so impossibly fast. I don't understand how he plays. <laughs> <laughs> stuff that fast, but we'll, we'll get into Well, it. then, I can't wait to see you try. <laughs> I uh, try. Yeah. I will try. All right, so this is Souls of Black by Testament, uh, one of the three songs in this week's Metal Mix Pack. And if you are a Testament fan, I have a pretty cool treat for you at the end of this song. Uh, we have an interview with somebody you might never have thought about who has a strong relation to Testament.
Ah. Uh. Shu, I will. I know that you sort of made a face and a comment after that solo, but I will never ever get bored of seeing you <laughs> play runs like that oh with gosh. almost no problem at all. Like your legato is ridiculous. Yeah, but Thanks, man. but yeah, like like seeing you tackle that, I was like, oh, this I, now now I'm really glad you were the note track on this song. <laughs> I'm sorry to Rye, and we will give Rye a chance to shine later. But I'm really glad you got a chance to oh, play man. that. that was, it's just uh, that's such a fun solo. Like the thing that I made a comment on was. Like, like I accidentally repeated a like a the wrong pattern too many times, but, <laughs> oh. but basically I got the idea across. So you just, you, yeah, you played everything right, just more of it than just you were more, supposed just to. Just a little bit too more or less. That's fine. Know, part, That's fine. Yeah, yeah, that was that was wonderful. <laughs> and yeah, I, I really like the bass line. I oh, noticed you were not using so a pick because oh, you never use a pick. Mm -hmm. But like I I kind of expected that that would have been a pick one. But no, maybe not. Right? Was it was the original played with fingers or um, was the original? I, I, I don't recall. It, it uh, more uh, cue um, for shoe. I mean, like like pick. I mean, okay. especially at the time in Thrash, like there, there, there was kind of a mix. Like they had plenty yeah. of people playing with fingers and plenty of people playing with picks, and people switching quite right. a bit too. Mm. Um, I mean, like it could have been played with a pick. There is a bit of a sweeping, right? Yeah. Like, I th oh man, I don't remember. Yeah, it, it it doesn't sound like a pick to me on the, uh, but I, I I didn't listen well, super close. And yeah, I but I trust you more than me when it comes to that stuff. Mm -hmm. Even though you have a clear bias against <laughs> picks. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, yeah, the, the hard part <laughs> here, honestly, like the, those shapes are pretty easy, actually. Mm -hmm. Right, and the hard part is when it goes. Yeah, and that's that's how it's done. Getting your you know? targets down and instead making of like sure uh, that you're uh, Yeah, and then having to jump up all the oh, way. Oh yeah, up yeah, yeah. Uh, get the second fret. Yeah, I have to do that too. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's yeah. the best part though. That. Yeah. That's, that's so <laughs> much fun. It's such a satisfying ending to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's such great riffs in that too. Yeah, yeah. If if I, if I had had more time, I definitely would have like gotten way more into the. Uh, uh, Yeah, like those those little tiny licks that are in there, like uh, they're really tricky. And I was I was trying to just sort of sight read them. I played it once, but like I was like, oh, like I, I got that. And if I really had time, I would lock into those because right. they're really juicy. Mm -hmm. It's great. I mean, it sounded yeah. wonderful. And uh, yeah, again, this is the kind of what is, what is what I usually call an aspirational song, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. work on this a little bit at a time. Obviously, taking it into riff repeater, we say that all the time. You know, taking it into riff repeater, slow it down, loop it, whatever you want to do. But this is not the kind of thing that you should expect to be able to play after playing it two or three times and be like, I'm perfect. If you do, you may not need Rocksmith anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't want that. We want you to keep <laughs> needing Rocksmith. But uh, yeah, I, I, this, this seems like it's uh, achievable, but it's going to take some effort. Totally. Uh, and anything worth doing does. Mm -hmm. so. Excellent. Thank you both so much. Thank uh, you. I promised everybody a little treat, especially if you're a Testament fan. Uh, so uh, we have an interview not with a member of Testament, even though they are a Bay Area band. We were kind of hoping you know, maybe we could have gotten somebody. But uh, we had a friend said, uh, you know, I actually know the artist who created the album art for Souls of Black. And we said, really? Like, yeah, let me put you in touch with him. So we have that person. His name is William Benson. He's the artist, and he not only created the, the cover to Souls of Black, he also created uh, three other Testament albums and uh, the logo for Testament, the famous, like, you know, large A and the, and the sweeping T's. He did all of that stuff. So we got on Skype with him, and uh, you'll, you'll see why we had such good access to him. Uh, after this, while we do this, we'll give away some uh, codes for the Metal Mix Pack. So if you'd like to win uh, this week's three-pack, we have five codes to give away for Steam players. So if you're playing on PC or Mac, this one's for you. Uh, and when we come back, we'll do, we're will do. we still going to do a bonus song anyway, even though this is about a 15-minute interview. Uh, we're going to come back, and we're going to do a bonus Slayer song uh, after this. So thanks for being here, and enjoy this interview with William Benson. It is my pleasure today to welcome somebody who we've never gotten a chance to talk to, but nepotism helped us make this connection. Uh, uh, William Benson is, uh, is joining us. He is a painter and an artist who has done several album covers for Testament, including Souls of Black. Uh, but the fun part is that his son is uh, Taylor Benson, who used to be uh, one of our producers here. So he, he got us the hookup. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, as you said yesterday, anything for your son, right? Uh, That's right. <laughs> we would love to talk about nothing but embarrassing stories about Taylor's uh, youth and all the mistakes that he made growing up. But uh, I, I got a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll save that for the blackmail stream later. Uh, <coughs> but I, I think the first question um, 
is uh, how does one actually get this line of work? I mean, it seems like it's a very rare thing to to ask or to be commissioned or uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know to do an album cover. Were you uh, contacted by the band, or was this something through one of your your artistic agents or, or representation that uh, that made this connection that got you these kind of gigs? Well, Dan, you know what it, the whole thing about being in the right place at the right time, it's who you know. And Ithaca is a fairly small town, at least it was back then. And one of the great recording engineers uh, back then was Alex Perialis of Pyramid Sound. And I, I've known, I'd known Alex for a long time. I'm also a part-time musician. Actually played with Huey Lewis when he was here at Cornell. Anyway, so Alex knew about my artwork. Um, and he was recording. He would get a lot of heavy metal bands in there, and Testament was one of them. And he called me up, and he goes, uh, you know, I've got a really good band in here called Testament. They've got uh, some ideas for an album cover and some lettering, and they want you to have a look. I said, okay, and I went down and I met Eric Peterson, guitarist for Testament. He is basically the visual driving force behind uh, most of the work that I did. He had very clear ideas uh, about what he, what the vision that, that he wanted. And uh, even though on Wikipedia it says that uh, New Order was their first album, I don't remember actually producing that album cover first. Hmm. The first album cover I produced for them, I think, I believe, was Practice What You Preach. Now, what happened was Eric showed me a, a drawing that either a cousin or a girlfriend, ex-girlfriend had made. And he goes, so we can't use this. It's a little too crude, but something like this. And back then, and the reason I know this was maybe the first was because it had to be square. We're still an album, you know, sure. final format. And so uh, I did a couple more sketches for him. And he goes, can you produce these in paint? And I said, yeah. And I produced um, Practice What You re Preach, exact size, 12 by 12. That painting of the five statues sort of disintegrating in the desert with clouds in the background. And I don't know if you know this, but there are skulls within the clouds. Oh, neat. I had not yeah. noticed that. Everybody's so, squinting at their monitors now because it's right below our, our pictures, uh, our video feeds right now. So that's how the first one got started. And after that, well, Eric and I connected very quickly, both as friends and on a visual level. You know, he admired my talent. I admired his vision, and we just were able to work well together. No, was that? And that's when, and it was okay. after that that he came to me for um, New Order or the New Order. Right. When uh, did you always create them at exactly twelve by twelve, or did you ever? I mean, I've heard that sometimes album art is created larger, and then it's you know reduced photographically when they when they do the the mass printing and stuff. It, it's actually much better to do it large, because most artwork actually looks better when it's reduced. And that's how I did um, the new order. I, the, it's at least twice the size. It's a pastel. The one for practice, what you preach, was an oil painting, but okay. uh, the new order is a pastel. And, and um, I can't get as uh, detailed as I want when it's that small. So it's at least twice the size. And in new order, it's very hard to see on the screen when I bumped it up, but there's the world at the bottom, right? You know, you know there's sure. the world. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's this large, dark blue, open mouth skull demon coming out of the universe. Right. We all know this. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's also up on the screen. So I have I have the uh, the four four albums: uh, New Order, uh, um, uh, Practice What You Preach, Souls of Black, and uh, uh, The Ritual. And these are all yes. very different pieces. Um, was how much creative leeway did you have when Eric came to you with a concept? Uh, you said that he had very specific ideas. Uh, would you sketch something out before you started the work and get sort of an agreement on what direction it should go in? Or did you talk about colors and, and, and what he wanted the palette to be? Or was that all well, up to you as, as the painter? As a painter, the palette was up to me. But yeah. for instance, for practice what you preach, he had a visual sketch. Someone had made a sketch. It was crude, but right. this is what he wanted. So I had that to go by. And he goes, and I want a desert scene and dark luminous clouds in the background. I said, yeah, well, we could put skulls in the clouds. That was my idea. And actually, we've done that for many, well, for some of the other covers that I did, especially Souls of Black. 
So for that one, I was given pretty clear direction from an already visual standpoint. When we got to New Order, uh, I had the I he had the idea, but he didn't have any sketches or anything. So I did. I sketched up three or four scenarios, placing the world small in different places, uh, having the demon uh, be more forthcoming or be more clear. But he liked the one that was more subtle. You know that this is coming up. People don't understand it, and the Earth is in the is down at the bottom. So that. That was a, you know, once we both got together again with my sketches, we came to a good a good decision on that one, I think. Did you have increasing creative freedom as it went on, as he learned to trust your instincts and you learned to trust his his vision? Sort of, were you able to sort of predict more of what he wanted for the band's well, look? Well, I don't want to put <laughs> myself in trouble. I'd like to plead the fifth here because That's fine. I, I didn't listen to the music that much. <laughs> if I had then yes, I would have probably been more uh, co-visionary with him. But I let him decide. Okay. And, and he was so good at it, and he knew what he wanted. So, you know, I thought I might as well just go, go with that. Um, I, I got to interject here because I think some of my, one of the coolest things is, is the wording, the lettering, testament. Oh, you did the logo as well. I did the letter, yeah. He came, to, <clears throat> he came to me with an idea. <clears throat> just the A was big in some crude lettering he'd done. And so I, yeah, I, I, I produced that lettering. That's and awesome. That was all done by hand, you know. They, no computers back then. Right. There's no testament font that you're just like, I'll, right. just, I'll just whip this <laughs> well, up. Well, there might be now. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> uh, so what happens to the originals? Do, do the originals, bec the, the paintings that you've created that became these, these uh, pieces of art, uh, became these album covers, uh, do they go, are, are they your property as the artist and you can save them or sell them or do they go back to the band? Is it considered a work for hire kind of thing? I just, it, you know, it, a lot of people don't think like, hey, I've got this album, but the original exists somewhere. And people have contacted me. Yeah. People who are big fans of Testament They've contacted me because they knew that I owned the artwork. Um, the lawyer for Testament said, we are simply contracting to use your artwork on the covers. Oh, okay. And, and I retained ownership. And I have since sold pretty much everything that I had that was related to Testament. Of course, if I'd had it now, I'd have gotten three times the price I did, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, but, but yeah, you most, know. most of the work's been sold. And these people are, are they're fanatical about it, you know? Oh, well, do you have any like old sketches? I said, well, sure, but they're just, he goes, I want that. Right. You know? <laughs> well, how much do you want? Yeah, exactly. When people get passionate about a band, they want everything that they, they can possibly get about that Absolutely. band. Absolutely. You know, yeah, as totally a matter of fact, one of the highest priced things I did sell were, was the original sketching layout for the word testament. Oh, wow. Yeah. On newsprint, you know, but, you know, nicely done with the ruler and forms and stuff. But of it was, course. you know, like coffee stained and rough. I mean, no, that just adds character to the piece. That's right. Yeah, as if it was produced in the 19th century. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or at least the 1980s. One of the two. Yeah. Right. Um, so, you know, the uh, the song we, we have uh, we have immortal rights. Is that is that? No, no. We have Souls of Black. Sorry. Immortal rights is the more angels. Of Black. Yes. We have we have the title track from Souls of Black in the game this week. Uh, and you know when we uh, when we license a song, uh, the label and and the the artist representation supplies us with the song and the official album art. So we're only allowed to use you know what they send us. But yeah. uh, as as one of our our metal scholars here said, he goes, "Oh no, this is going to be great because that album is so iconic." And as an artist, of course, you're you're never stopping. You've you've moved on to doing uh, a, a lot of different stuff. You're doing nature uh, with a hint of abstract in it. You're doing landscapes. Do you still do any of the? I saw that you did like a jazz album cover, but do you still get any work from the the metal community at all? I do not. <laughs> do you want more work from the metal community, or do you feel like, hey, I, I I said what I wanted to say with these pieces, and you know I can move on and do other stuff? Do you mind this being part of your legacy because it's so different? No, I, I don't mind now. it at all. And the reason Eric connected me with me so so well and easily is because I'm a representational painter. You know, and I wasn't doing airbrush, and he liked the old oil painting style. Uh, Souls of Black, I thought, was probably the most successful marriage of concept his concept my painting uh, in the package a lot and i've heard that album along with the material that's on the album and i, I gotta tell you dan that painting was i'd say three feet by four feet wow yeah reduce and it look at it it's a it's a rectangle why 
because we now move to cassettes. Oh, wow. So then they just cropped it a little bit for the... No, no, no. I, I, I did it on the dimensions of the cassette rectangle. Oh, okay. But for the album, then, did they did they cut it off or did they letterbox it? Like, what did, you know, uh, I, I wonder... For the album, they took what I had done and simply reduced it to the size of a cassette. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you had that in your house. Uh, Taylor had mentioned that that was one of the pieces that he grew up with, and he said that that piece scared me a lot. Yeah, no, it's a scary piece. <laughs> you got these dark robed, no faces, no hands, <laughs> floating over the water with, with skull clouds in the background. I mean, yeah, that'd freak anybody out. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I think that's great. You're sort of like, Especially Hi. a seven-year-old. <laughs> right, I'm here to comfort you, but also to create your nightmares that you need comforting that's from. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. You have the full, full circle. That's great. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, if people want to see your work, uh, W.M. Benson is where your current work is. Very different. Charcoals of Cows. Uh, I, I went to college in Ithaca, uh, New York, which is where you live. I don't know. Uh, I don't think anybody knows that. But as soon as I saw your work, I like I had a strong reaction. Like, oh, my God, it's Tompkins County. You know, like I, I recognize that uh, from being there for four years. It's a beautiful area. Uh, but uh, I, I uh, so you, so if you go to the website, folks, you may see uh, things that you don't expect. Uh, but that's good. It's it's always good to surprise <laughs> yourself. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I could have sworn you said something about Huey Lewis and being his bassist. Yes. What's that? How did that happen? Well, and why are you well, not still Huey? You Lewis's and I were basis? good friends here when we went to Cornell together. Wow. And, and we're, we we actually he joined my band. Oh, that's he fantastic. Up, he came up to us we had a gig, and he goes, "Hey, can I can I sit in? I know a couple songs." I showed him the set list, and he said, "Yeah, I know I know these two songs, and I play harp." And we had a bad singer at the time. They, he took a break, so I said, "Sure, here, sit in on this." And then we hired him. What was the uh, What was the name of the band at the time? This was a um, this was a question on who wants to be a millionaire, and really, and the, yes. <laughs> what was the name of Huey Lewis's first band? And the name was Slippery Elm. <laughs> All right, sounds rock and roll, I guess. Slippery Elm. Is there a story behind that? <laughs> well, that was that that was brought to the band by the drummer, <clears throat> and we said Slippery Elm. What 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 is that? He goes, it's a natural lozenge that you can eat or or suck on for a sore throat and they still produce it i had no slippery i've elm. never heard of slippery elm i know if i ever get a chance to interview huey lewis i'm going to bring him a, a, a case of, of slippery, of slippery elm. elm yeah there you go. say yep. like i just i want you to know i go deep <laughs> 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 william thank you so much for the time this is really awesome we've never welcome. gotten a chance to talk to an artist uh, who does this kind of stuff uh but uh i really appreciate your time and uh and and hey uh tell taylor we said hello <laughs> I will do that at his wedding in oh, a yeah? couple of weeks. Oh, that's right. Yes. Oh, man. I was invited, I do, but I'm not available, <laughs> so I'm not going to get a chance to meet you in person. Uh, All right. Well, in any bad. case, thanks this a lot. This has been fun, though. I really appreciate you uh, getting into detail on it because, again, as, you, as you've as you said, Testament fans are extremely passionate, and every little bit of information that people can get, a little bit more insight into what goes into the music that they love, uh, it's all good. So thanks a lot, and thanks for being here. All right, Dan. Take care. That was a lovely interview. We don't normally get a chance to talk to people that, you know, aren't... I mean, occasionally when we're lucky, we get to talk to the artists themselves, but you don't always consider some of the other things that go into making uh, the music that you know or, or your impressions of the music that you know. So uh, thanks again to William Benson, and thanks to Taylor for the hookup. Uh, Taylor said he'd be watching today, so hopefully he is. Uh, uh, you should be proud of your dad, because your dad is proud of you. Uh, if you've just come in, this is the Rocksmith uh, live stream. We are uh, actually not live. Uh, we are taped uh, today. We are pre-recorded because we have uh, something else going on on Thursday. So we're doing this on Wednesday. But all the giveaways are live. We're going to have another giveaway for the Ernie Ball Prize Pack when we're uh, done with the show. But we also wanted to uh, take the opportunity today, since it's a three-pack, normally on a show when we only have three songs, we like to do four songs. We like to do, the idea was about an hour. Well, we, you know, we haven't done like an hour in a very long time. Uh, we always go a little bit over. So we're going to go a little bit over today because uh, there's always, just sort of like Slayer is the jello of metal, right? Because there's always room for Slayer. Uh, we, when we did the Slayer pack, which was a five-pack, uh, we only got to play four of those songs. The one song we did not get to play on the stream was Dead Skin Mask, and that's what we're going to do today with our friend Sam Schwartz, who was the note tracker on that track, right? 
Yeah, so you I'm didn't... the Jello of Note Tracker. No, no, I didn't say that you were the Jello of Note no, Tracker. No, I'm just saying it fits with the no, theme. No, no, as bad analogies go, I've had worse. Uh-huh. I'm saying, but I'm just saying. Yeah, you got. You didn't get a chance to play Deadskin Master That's true, first I never time around. Did. I never got to play it. But Anthony jumped in because. Yeah, I just I just wanted to play some Slayer. Because want a happy birthday again. <laughs> by the way, and happy birthday Thank two you, weeks Dan. before that to you, Sam. Because you are, are you both in May? Were you both May? No, birthday? I'm a March baby. You're a March You're thinking baby. Thinking of another Sam. I'm or thinking of uh, yeah. Else I, I only have what, I only have one Sam. It always yeah. happens to Jello. You know right? what? I, Thank I, you for the birthday wish. Yeah, yeah sure. Pro- birthday, no Anthony. problem. Uh, w- so I guess if you're not familiar with Slayer, tell us the history of the band. I don't know. They started. Okay, then what are we in for with this song? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they started. <laughs> uh, uh, awesome riffage. Um, that's why I wore my my picnic shirt. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. Your is this look like your job interview for Slayer? Is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, I was like, buttons. Hey, I know, I know. You guys are looking for uh, not me. A nice all. upstanding young lad <laughs> <laughs> with you a bright future me. in Slayer. <laughs> you just told me an interesting story about. Uh, uh, um, a portion of the bass arrangement that was it's both transcribed. Th- yeah. Oh, it, for it's the guitar both. part it's as well. Both, yeah. He, oh, okay. He, they just played it that way. Uh-huh. And Carrie, I don't know. If, I don't know if Tom Araya knows that Carrie King. So basically, there's a part <laughs> in the song that the, there's a riff. Do you mind putting my volume up just a little bit? So he does it like this. Or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he was like, okay, I'm going to transcribe it an octave down. And then he transcribed it an octave down wrong. So he did. So what should oh. be. It should be. But he did it half step. That, that wow. the, the run, like a half step down. I just thought like, it was a cool variation. Yeah. yeah. I like, I thought, that's <laughs> what I thought, too, when I transcribed yeah. it. I was like, that's dope that they just did it like that. And then he's like, yeah, I just transcribed it wrong. <laughs> it's happy funny, like, accidents. He says it just like, yeah, it's just Bob like Ross it's always so talked about happy accidents, yeah, but exactly. I didn't expect to find a happy it was accident. A super happy accident. That's and great. It, uh, but it's just like the way he says it in that interview. Is really <laughs> cool. He's just like, yeah, I just transcribed it wrong. Whatever, middle. And you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, whoa, all right. Hey, it works, though, and it, it sounds totally great. It totally works. Yeah, it's well, great. now I want to hear it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's play it. It's I will try to play it. You, Yeah, you do your best to play his part incorrectly. <laughs> what, if I, yeah, what if I just play the same thing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> yeah. I fixed Slayer. This is Dead Skin Mask by Slayer, available as a single or as our Slayer. the wrong middle. <laughs> five pack. It's up to you. Uh, and after this, uh, more music. <laughs>
Oh, it's over. <laughs> oh. oh, metal. Oh, metal. It's not over. Just when you thought it was. So here's the metal. <laughs> Slayer is of course unimpeachable in the world of metal and now you see why. What a great track. And I'm glad you finally got to play it on the stream after it's way all, fun. after all this time. Yeah, you clearly had a lot of fun with it. You got what uh, guitar hero fans uh, call uh, skittles, which is just uh, a boatload of different colored boxes <laughs> coming at you oh, dude. Uh, during yeah. that solo and it just does not let up. I like tasted it, it actually the rainbow, you man. tasted the rainbow. <laughs> that was and, that I, was rough. So there was I some, really, uh, yeah. I was just going to uh, point out uh, a technique that Sam used. So okay. you, were, you were doing some pick tapping. Yeah, right? so that's what he does. So yeah. Kerry King, in the uh, when he when he taps for that solo, at least he does uh, pick pick tapping. So he does this one lick where he. So there's this one lick like right, he'll do like a. So instead of traditional picking, you're just you're hitting it like you would with your fingertip, but you're hitting it with the edge of the pick. Right, Satriani does it for surfing with the alien sure. too. Sure. Yeah. So it's like it's this, but instead of so instead of doing, it's a little easier to get a little bit more speed, and it gives it like a little bit more of like a harsher tone when you do. Uh huh. It, yeah. It, it gives it that yeah. sound. It's a little more defined. Yeah, huh? it's a little bit. It, it the, just the it ha, it, it's a little sharper. Mm -hmm. Um, and so but and, and you can do it, or at least I can do it a little faster than like like if I'm trying to do it. I can do it a little. Oh yeah, much faster. Uh -huh. And, and you it can sounds get that cleaner. Kind of, that you can get that kind of effect, which is what he's going for. Oh wait. <laughs> that's great. You know. Thank you for bringing that up because I didn't. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't watching when you were playing it, but yeah, that's that's something we don't see too often. I had some time to watch Sam solo because <laughs> I would just go. <laughs> <laughs> it, wait for the next uh, red line <laughs> to pop up. <laughs> and you're like, wow, look at that stuff. And I'm like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, Sam's having a conniption. <laughs> yeah. I watched Sam solo and scream metal. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you both thank for you. doing that. Yeah. Uh, hey, in case you missed it, uh, well, you probably didn't because now you know we have Slayer. And uh, that's one of the things that I wanted to suggest. If you are enjoying the music of this week's Metal Mix Pack, uh, then uh, you, can, uh, you can get more. We do have more in our library. Now, uh, this is kind of funny because whatever genre you're into, if you like metal, uh, what we often hear from metal fans are, you guys need more metal. But if you're into classic rock, we also hear, you need more classic rock from those folks. And the blues heads, the blues hounds are all like, hey man, how come you don't have more blues? Uh, so it is natural to, to want to see more of your own tastes represented in the library. So the, one of the reasons that we do this on In Case You Missed It is because if you are drawn to what you're hearing on any given week, like say this week, if you like the metal mix, then there's other stuff in our library that you may already be there that you may not be aware of, or you may want to reconsider. Like maybe you're in a different place in terms of your own personal skills. Uh, now than you were when we released the Slayer 5 pack. So maybe now 
uh, you're ready to tackle some of that material. Or maybe you didn't even realize that we had Slayer and you're thinking, oh, this stuff is great. I wish you guys would get some Slayer. That happens fairly often. We hear that from people online. You should get this band. And sometimes it's a band that we have like five to ten songs from in our library already. Uh, so if you appreciate metal, uh, you probably appreciate Slayer. Again, like I said, they are a titan of the genre. Uh, and uh, so we have five songs, uh, including some of their, their most famous songs among their fan base. Uh, we also have Amana Marth. Uh, this was something that I think took people by surprise. And uh, Arthur Von Nagel told me uh, that this was metal about Vikings, not Mike Viking metal. Uh, and that stuck with me. Uh, so if you if you would like to hear some tales of epic Norse gods and the people that fight them, uh, that's where you can uh, get into a Monomarth. Now we have plenty of other stuff too. We have we have Mastodon. We have Pantera. Uh, you know we have an Arch Enemy track. Uh, so if you're looking for stuff that's beyond the the stuff that you you might hear on the radio or uh, you know sort of like I'm gonna not use this in a perjurative context, but commercial metal stuff that you might that might have a higher profile. Uh, you know, we, we do have other options, and we're always willing to, to add more. So uh, hopefully this week proves that we have not given up on metal. I know the metal fans seem to get very, very passionate and concerned that there's never going to be any more metal. Like, whenever we put a, a pop star in there, they think that, like, we're taking Iron Maiden out of the catalog because we put in something that they didn't like. And that's not true at all. We are continuing to add songs to our library. Uh, we have more than 1,200 at this point, and we will continue to try to seek out more pop, more metal more blues, more R&B. Uh, you know, we're, we're going for uh, a wide variety and uh, we can only just keep adding more stuff that hopefully you would find interesting. So in case you missed it, check out Slayer, check out Amon Marth, and check out our entire catalog, of course. Uh, you can always go to rocksmith.com and get a list of uh, the songs that are currently available. And what people may not realize is that uh, you can also import your Rocksmith 1 on-disc songs into your Rocksmith 2014 remastered library. Uh, it's tricky depending on which platform you're on, uh, but it can be done, and you can bring about 50 of the original 55 songs uh, over. So uh, that's like Red Hot Chili Peppers. That's some uh, Nirvana. You know, there's there's some pretty big ticket names there. So uh, there are many ways to expand your library, and that one is actually one of the more affordable ones if you've already got the original Rocksmith one. So uh, in any case... Uh, that's what's up, and we have one more song to do. Uh, if you are joining us late, you may want to go back and watch from the beginning uh, because uh, this is a good show if you like metal. This week is the Metal Mix Song Pack. It's the first one of these we've done where we've taken three very different kinds of metal and put them into one pack, uh, and uh, we are also pre-recorded, so while we have a live giveaway coming up, everything that you're seeing, just for complete honesty, uh, we're pre-recording this because we have a conflict tomorrow. We have a, an office-wide meeting, uh, and so uh, we will. Uh, we, we didn't, didn't want to miss the day. Uh, Doug is here live, uh, UB Vertigo. He's in our, our chat room, and you'll want to pay attention to him because he'll help you figure out the next giveaway opportunity. Uh, I'll be there live, uh, so even while I'm talking here, I'm probably chatting about something completely different in the chat room. But thank you for being here all the same. Uh, we will, of course, uh, return next week live uh, on Thursdays uh, as normal but uh, you know same same time uh, but you know different energy uh, this final song is uh, well Arthur do you want to introduce it uh, Arthur Von Nagel is here he's uh, uh, on the bass there uh, Arthur is the uh, bassist and vocalist for Bay Area Metal Legends Cormorant right Legends. No. well no. Well, I mean, well, you, you no, carved your all. niche. We you carved it, your it. niche. And uh, Brian Pody on guitar as well, of course. Also a metal legend. Yes, also a metal legend in your own right. We don't talk about sort of your roots as, as a player and playing in different bands and stuff. I've been recognized on the street by people. Right. Have you really? Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Oh and God, not just like... Brian bleeping Pody. Yeah, I used to get Really? <laughs> wow. Well, that was, was that your middle... Was that your nickname? The, the bleeping part? If, if you ever get... <laughs> Email from Brendan with me, like CC'd on it. I I will show up as that because that's how I'm in his contact. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, and it wasn't just Brendan West that greeted you on the street and said no, I recognize no. you because by at this point he should recognize you. You guys work together a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, his his face is fuzzy to me. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> his face is fuzzy and it's the beard. Yeah. Arthur, you helped put this pack together as one of our, our, our biggest metal. You're like the metal scholar. If people haven't seen the Rocksmith Encore where you break down the different subgenres, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's definitely worth your time. If you're hearing this and it all sounds the same, it's actually very not the same and, and, and Arthur breaks that down to help educate people. What's the difference between death metal and black metal and speed metal and thrash metal and many other variants of metal and where it all came from? Um, but yeah, you, you, you helped pick or steer 
uh, Brian and the music team towards what we should be asking for for this, as well as working in the the re the, uh, the requests. Yeah, but so we we wanted to well, uh, the the idea was to do a, a very true TR 0 metal pack. <laughs> like this is like the real stuff. Right. Um, not that there's real and false stuff, but this is in the in the parlance of metal. This is like cult or whatever. Right. Okay. Um, and black metal has very rarely been in video games, and there's a reason for that. It's explicitly anti-mainstream. It's explicitly it's, it's it's meant to be inaccessible. It's meant to make you feel uncomfortable. Um, it's meant to be um, you know not challenging from a from a technical standpoint, but just challenging from, from a, an experiential, from standpoint, an experiential yeah. standpoint. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's built. The, the entire genre is built around rebellion and just uh, a rejection of all norms. Right. Right. So this song, uh, <laughs> I saw some funny comments. People saying, "Oh, wow, they couldn't even get like a, a, a good recording quality for the for the master, <laughs> like that, like it was us." Uh, no, that that's how it sounds, and that's <laughs> on purpose. I, yeah, I mean that's kind of the sound yeah. of like early black metal. Yeah, like it's it's kind of lo-fi. Yeah, it's on, it, it's it was actually a, you know a rebellion against the the technical um, and production like steril not sterility but right as yeah there's as a, of, of like death metal at the time which was getting very polished polished yeah, yeah right? Bob Rock did not produce this album <laughs> yes. he certainly did not um, so yeah the, the, this whole movement that oh, originally started. There's there's two ways of it. It originally started in England with Venom, and then also uh, Sweden with Bathory, and there was a whole and, and also Celtic Frost in, in Switzerland. Some early early a, like 80s black metal, and then Norwegians didn't really get a hold of it until the early 90s, and that's when you get bands like Dark Throne um, coming in and, and and modifying that sound um, and adding these the tremolo picking and the very sort of oppressive ambiance that you get, right? Um, and then you you know you have bands like Emperor that that got very technical with it, and that's a whole different way of looking at it. Um, but this is uh, this song uh, might seem simple, but it, in a way it's it's almost like the Blitzkrieg bop of mm -hmm. of, of metal. It, it's it's actually very uh, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's approachable. Like you, there's a lot of stuff you can actually learn from it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can learn the tremolo picking over several strings. Uh, you can learn, uh, you know, the obviously power chords, but also augmented and flatted fifths. Um, there's a lot of core elements of metal that that are in the song, and then. Um, just culturally speaking, uh, black metal is one of the major cultural exports of Norway. I think it's actually the biggest cultural export of Norway. So it, it has just a larger historical and cultural importance. Um, so you kind of need to just frame it that way. And uh, you know, th th there's a whole amazing and terrifying history around <laughs> the genre. Um, but you know, nowadays it comes into all kinds of permutations, right? You can have like, you know, black metal that has a huge range of of ideology of, uh, of uh, you know political leanings. Sure. And, um, you know, like you have um, a, there's a Cascadian black metal scene uh, in the United States that's you know very like very left wing. You know, very about ecology and and there's just a whole realm of things that that can be expressed with this type of music. So long as it's rejecting what is culturally acceptable, that's the kind of the core aspect of it. All right. Yeah. Thank you for putting it in context, because I think a lot of people heard this, and, and exactly, the, the response was, this sounds like crap, and it looks really easy. Why would I need to learn this? But it's it's actually a building block for a lot of things that came after. It, it's oh absolutely yeah, very a much building so. block. And, uh, and yeah, and all those criticisms, that would be a compliment, I think. For, <laughs> right. For people I don't like it. this. You, it wasn't built for you to like. Yeah. It's it, kind of, yeah. yeah. It's made for people who, who feel like I'm not a part of society. You know, here's here is music that I can relate to. Right. You know? All right. Yeah, there's a beauty to that, I think. Yeah. Let's play it. Yeah. It's Transylvanian Hunger, which you haven't mentioned the name yet, by Dark Throne. One of the three songs in the Metal Mix Song Pack. You can buy just this one. You can buy just the other two, whatever you like. After this, we'll give away some more Ernie Ball gear. But check this out. <laughs> it's definitely a test of endurance, too, because this does not stop for the next six minutes.
yeah, it's very much about ambiance. Sorry, I couldn't hear any of your comments because it was right, like your mic is a little low and it was right in the same frequencies. Oh. What were you saying during the song? What was I saying during the song? Yeah. Oh, okay. You were sort of like adding running commentary. Oh, um, what was I saying? I was saying that, um, let's see. Uh, I talked about how the, the main riff is one of the all time classic metal riffs in general and how Fenris, the, one of the primary composers for, for Dark Throne, kind of 
he focuses very much on riffs, and that's what he he's an encyclopedia of music. It's really amazing, um, and that's how we he, how he he connects to things. It's just he doesn't really know the song. He doesn't really know the. I mean, he knows it, but he he just really is like, okay, that's a good riff, and that that's what he zeroes in on, and, and which is kind of distinct um, for a lot of um, black metal, which is a little less riff based and even more ambient. But that da 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 that just gets stuck in your head after yeah. a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that moving line. We ran an interview with uh, Fenris from uh, uh, as one of our social media posts this week because, mm-hmm. uh, and he, yeah, he was absolutely amazing. He's he, he's a great interview. He's fascinating. And uh, we you know we yeah. had to put a little sort of like not safe for work uh, language yeah. throughout. But yeah, he was he was a great interview and, and obviously an amazing fountain of knowledge for our, for for metal and. Uh, it was really entertaining to hear him speak. He would be a great teacher, um, and uh, he's actually a council man, I believe. He got actually got elected oh, in, yeah, yeah. Uh, as a politician uh, against his will, but he was he was elected in his town. Wow, um, against his will? Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, he like didn't want to run, but they Th- <laughs> they voted him in anyways. Um, so wow. he, he has a government position. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's that's, that's amazing. Um, but oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, by the time this album came out, this band was just a duo. Right. Yeah. Oh, r- originally, they had three members, and yet, yes, they were they were a duo at this point. Yeah, it's That's amazing. Right. Yeah, just um, yeah. Ba- one guy did all the v- vocals, and then another guy did all the instruments. Uh, Fenris is mostly a drummer, is how he identifies. Mm-hmm. Uh, his favorite drummer is um, the guy from Motorhead. That's his old favorite. Understandable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm glad you were here to put this in some context because uh, between some of our fans and some of the the, the Dark Throne fans, <laughs> there were some people that were like, "This is ridiculous. This this goes against everything the band is about." And then to kind of you come on here and speak very clearly and passionately about what this means to the history of metal and the foundations and and why this music exists really puts it in context. It, a cynic would say, "Cash grab. You're just trying to sell out." But on the mm. other hand, like, no, people deserve to know that there's deep history behind this music as well. And if this is one way they can become closer with the music by learning to play it, even if it's simple, you know, like I there, there's value, there's serious value to that, and it's it's great that we can, you know, do that. Yeah, it's really important to to understand this context globally for metal um like i even you, you'd find it in surprising places like i read an interview with um what's his name darren malakian from yes. system of a down he cites dark thrones one of huh. his favorite bands and you could and if you look at some of the system of a down stuff in that context i know they're not like true metal or whatever right. but if you look at it from uh, from that context you can go oh yes there's some influences there like just little little touches little textures that are from from black metal um, so you never know where where these inspirations will come from, and so you need to be open and just take all those ideas, right? Wise words. So, thank you both very much. Mm-hmm. It feels very weird to throw it to a giveaway now, <laughs> because what a <laughs> crass commercial thing to do. But I'm gonna do it. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to uh, win some Ernie Ball gear, uh, uh, here you go. Have some. Uh, we have uh, this Ernie Ball prize pack. We gave one away earlier in the show. And uh, now we're giving away a second one. So it's all the same stuff, a brand new strap. It might be black, it might be green. I'm not sure which one you're going to get uh, because I have sort of a mismatched pair at the moment. Uh, a dozen picks from Ernie Ball and uh, and three from us, the, the rare Rocksmith picks that you can only get here. A uh, brand new set of strings for your guitar and your bass, the, uh, the lime green sets, which are pretty good middle-of-the-road gauges that kind of do anything, whether you want to play lead guitar or rhythm guitar or uh, you know, just a, sort of a comfortable tension on bass. Uh, plus the Wonder Wipes, which keep your guitar minty clean and nice and fresh, uh, as well as a peg winder. So you can win all that stuff if you follow the instructions now. Uh, tell uh, Doug will tell you what to do. He's UB Vertigo or in our chat room. He runs our giveaways, and uh, if you win, he's going to contact you via Whisper here on Twitch, and uh, you're going to have to send him your name, your address, and your phone number. Please do tell us how to format your address. Uh, because I don't always know, especially for international winners, for those of you who are wondering, you do not have to just be in America. Uh, I continue to send out prizes worldwide whenever I can. Uh, and uh, if we have your full information that way, if something does go wrong or if I mangle the address, uh, that's why we ask for your phone number so that the uh, 
so that the package company can contact you and work out the details. So good luck to you. Uh, if you didn't win one, don't worry. We'll have some next week. Uh, Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's where we do this every week. Uh, and uh, that uh, currently is 10 p.m. GM or UTC. So uh, if you are in Europe, uh, I know there's a lot of different time zones, and we have a lot of fans from all over the place. Uh, that's why I always tell you 10 p.m. UTC, and then you're going to need to calculate it from there. The internet will help if you're not sure. Uh, if you would like to know what's coming next week, I can tell you this much it's different it's not this we uh we, we did uh, we, we pulled a bit of a stylistic shift but you will be able to find out what it is if you go to rocksmith.com tomorrow uh there will be a puzzle posted in the morning in the dlc area of our forums and uh, you can work together with your other folks uh, other fans that uh, hang out in the forum uh try to figure out what rolling stone 222 has come up with uh, because who knows what it's going to be. Uh, even because we are pre-recording this, I don't know what the puzzle is going to be tomorrow. So your guess is as g literally as good as mine right now. I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, check it out tomorrow at rocksmith.com. Uh, dig into the forums in the DLC area. You'll find a, a thread called Clue for, and then the date of the next DLC. Uh, and uh, yeah, we would normally also be doing a Rocksmith Encore on Monday, but I wanted to remind you that we're not doing a Rocksmith Encore this month for the simple reason that we have Monday off. It's Memorial Day here in the U.S., so uh, we get a three-day weekend. And when we looked at the schedule and thought, like, what else is going on in our lives right now? Can we reschedule? No. Uh, so we're just going to take a pass on Encore this month. We will be back in June with a Rocksmith Encore, which is a special show uh, on uh, a different topic, something that isn't DLC. Usually it's a passion project for somebody on the on the uh, the uh, team but if there's something that you would specifically like to see us tackle on Rocksmith Encore or more of something that we've already tackled on Encore like we've we, we've been threatening that we might do a second one about uh, guitar effects and how they work uh, we would like to do another show and tell where people bring in their personal instruments but we can also dig into other things like specific techniques if there's something that you want to learn that you'd, you'd like some more more of a personal touch to please do let us know go to the forums for that too uh, there are threads there uh, for Rocksmith Encore topic uh, requests and I would love to hear your ideas. Uh, we have some but you know we always want to be feeding you guys what it is that you want to know whenever we possibly can. So uh, until next week I am Dan Amrick your community developer. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this week. Thanks again to William Benson and to Taylor Benson for hooking us up with that and uh, thanks to all of our players who came in and most of all thanks to you for watching. Uh, we will be back next week and uh, we will leave you with another look at the metal mix. Maybe this is your cup of tea, maybe it's not but hopefully you learned a little something today and Maybe you'll appreciate this trailer a little bit more on the way out. See you next week, everybody. Bye.
Immortality, don't I lose you thinking you are?